name's Marty and welcome to this video series on building your own SG guitar kit from Guitar Kit World. In the following video, I'm going to show you how I put together this project guitar. I'm going to look at all aspects of the build including finishing, installing hardware, connecting the electronics and then doing a final setup. So the guitar we're working with today is an SG guitar kit. We've got a mahogany body, quilted maple veneer top, mahogany neck with ebony fretboard, mother of pearl, trapezoid inlays, we've got a neck and bridge humbucker, two volume and two tone, and of course a tunematic style bridge. So from here, I'm gonna take the video back to the very start of the build, and we'll start the project by inspecting the body and looking for any problems. Okay, so from here, we'll quickly inspect the body. At this stage, I'm just looking for major defects, so major dents that might require filling, deep scratches, things we need to repair before we start the project. I'm also looking for glue stains, things that might uh, prevent our finish from absorbing into the timber. You'll often see them around the base of the body. I can see a few on the sides of the guitar here, which we'll come back to later. But for the most part, I think we're in pretty good shape. Next thing we need to do is dry fit the neck. As I already mentioned, we dry fit the neck so we can check the neck alignment, check the neck angle, and also check the scar length of the guitar. So first things first, we need to put the neck into the neck cavity. Insert the neck heel in first and then gently push down. Make sure the, the neck's all the way in and all the way up towards the back of the neck pocket. Next thing you wanna do is measure the scar length. So what you normally do for that is measure where the bridge would normally sit to the nut. Now on a SG style guitar kit that should be 628 mil or 24.75 inches. And the next thing we want to do is check the neck alignment. Now this is a really tight fitting neck so I won't have any concerns there but what I'd normally recommend doing if you have a loose fitting neck is to measure center on your neck itself on the neck heel and center make a center point between the two pre-drilled holes for the bridge. Draw a line and make sure they line up perfectly. If you don't have pre-drilled holes on your bridge, one thing you can do is clamp two straight edges of timber and then measure, have a ruler underneath there before you clamp, find center and align to that. Just to test fit the angle of the bridge, all we need to do, loosely fit those bridge posts, fit the bridge, And just ensure our string height is going to be more or less aligned with the bridge or sitting a little bit a little bit above it which this one appears to be fine okay now we've uh, dry fit the neck and check for any issues there we can permanently set the neck Just clean out the neck cavity using a small brush. Just make sure there's no dust, sawdust, anything like that caught up in there. And just check the back of the neck as well, the heel. Now using PVA or a similar product, and just using a brush, apply the glue so that we get a nice even coating of glue. And apply some to the heel. Just as when we dry fit the neck push the heel, the end of the heel in first into the neck cavity, push down and then push the entire neck into place. Taking two clamps, clamp to the heel of the neck and the underside of the body. 
and check the manufacturer's label of the product you're using. In most cases, you can safely remove the clamps after 24 hours. Okay, so we got the SG guitar kit up on the bench now. Now, this SG kit has no binding on the neck or the body, so much less chance of there being any issues with glue. But having said all of that, we will still inspect the body fairly carefully. The veneer is glued on, obviously, so there could be some issues around the edges. We'll have a look. So just, just inspecting the guitar here, I can see, definitely see some glue here. It looks like the veneer is lifted and it's been repaired, so we'll need to address that. Um, small amount of glue around here as well. Looks like there's been a crack repaired here as well. We'll need to have a look at. Um, otherwise, the guitar itself looks good. Beautiful um, quilted veneer top on this one. Okay, so we've identified a couple of areas with glue. So you can see around this top horn here, for instance. So I'm gonna give that a bit of a sand now. And try not to apply too much pressure because the veneers are quite thin on the edges of these guitars. And it's coming away fairly easily. Come down to the lighter grade of sandpaper. The idea there is just to remove any um, any marks left by the coarser grade sandpaper that we've used before. Give the guitar a wipe down. And finally just uh, clean up the actual work area. So remove any dust from the from the work area also. Okay, so before we stain, a couple of things we need to do. We need to protect the fretboard and protect the electronics cavity at the back and the pickup cavities at the front. So what we'll do is apply some uh, masking tape. We'll start with the uh, electronics cavity at the back here. so we'll start by applying some uh, mahogany and what I want to do first obviously is do the top and try and get that that nice figured grain covered nicely and then we'll work our way around the sides and finally the back
Now I've mixed up um, my natural grain fill, it's a water based product. I've mixed it up at, a, at about an additional 20% water to the product. What you really want to do is start applying your grain fill, working across or working with the grain first, sorry. You see that's um, it's really getting in there now. And then across the grain. So you're really working into those pores. Given the SG several hours to dry and a grain filler to dry off, um, next job is to sand away the excess grain filler that's left. So after about 20 minutes, I did come along with a um, damp rag and start to wipe away any excess, which helps reduce the amount of sanding. But we still have some, um, you can probably see this gray film sitting on the surface here that we really need to remove. Um, now when you're sanding grain fill, we really need to just sand level to the surface of the wood. With sanding, I used to sand a lot to a lot finer grit at this stage, but these days I generally start with a heavier grit. So start with a 120 grit, um, work my way up to 180, and then on to 220. And um, what I've found is it's pretty important not to jump between the grades of paper too much, or your finer grade paper is going to have too much work to do. It'll it'll clog up, or um, you'll just have to push or work the paper too hard, so it'll be too much work, or you'll go through too much paper. So it's pretty important to go from um, or use three different different stages of um, sanding paper at this point. Okay, so I've got most of that excess removed now. I've only sanded using the 120 grit at this point. Um, so I'll follow up next with the 180 which will remove the uh, scratch marks left from the 120 and then the 220 to remove the scratch marks left from the 180. So I'm really using the low grit paper to remove the, uh, the grain fill and then the, the remaining grades just to tidy up. So if I bring the guitar up nice and close, you should see, hopefully you can see that, that those grains are, are filled now, those pores. I've sanded back a lot of that stain off the top, the sides, and the back as well. And um, what I want to do is, is try and blend another stain with it. I'm just going to apply this to the top um, as we start. So as per usual, I've got a clean rag. I'm just folding in the edges so that we don't deal with any frayed edges that may leave uh, fibers on the, uh, on the guitar. And we'll be good to go from there. So again, I'm just going to dip my uh, dip the cloth in this, this diluted teak, uh, golden teak, sorry, and just start applying. We'll let that soak and I'll come back in about 10 minutes, I'd say, and just, just wipe away any excess. Next thing you want to do with the SG is stain the neck slightly. So I just want to give it a, a very light, um, similar colour to the body, but much lighter. So I've mixed this down quite a bit. Just put it on a sample piece. It's about the uh, about the colour I wanted. So staying a little brighter, but also a little bit lighter. So we've grain filled the back of this neck, as shown in a previous video. So from here, this should take stain quite well. What I thought I'd do is apply a um, fine buffing oil, which is a combination of tongue oil and wax. And what will happen there is the, um, the tongue oil will absorb into the timber um, and the wax will then sit on the inside and we can build up those wax layers into something we can, um, we can polish into a semi-gloss. And um, I'll just load up my rag and it's really the same process as staining. We're just, just dragging that through and you can see um, 
system of that wax that's formulated in the mix there. So I'll be looking to um, <coughs> wipe any of that off. And that's really all there is to it. So I would come back about 10 minutes later and just remove any excess with a, with a clean rag. Um, just any excess that hasn't absorbed in obviously and then I'd leave it to dry just um, just follow the recommendations on the uh, the product you're using but I'm sure it'll be quite similar okay so one of the very last jobs we need to do with our SG guitar kit with regard to finishing is sealing this neck so finishing um, finishing guitar necks is a little different to finishing guitar bodies for one our hands are all over the neck so there's a lot of oils and, and dirt and and gunk basically that can transfer from the hands onto the neck and the second thing is we want the neck to be able to play fast so if you have a, a thick glossy finish on the back of the neck your fingers are going to drag a little bit while you play so what you really want to do is apply a very light finish to the back something that will seal it and then also um, buff it out to a matte finish which is generally not going to cause as much friction between your hands and um, and the neck itself so I'm just putting an oil finish on this you could uh, you could use Tongue oil or uh, true oil is another good option that uh, that finishes really nicely, and um, linseed oil would also be another good option. So um, really, any of those will be fine. You just you're looking to to seal it without leaving a lot of material on the neck. So uh, hopefully that's um, hopefully that's useful. Okay, so we'll let that um, that oil wax combination um, finish dry. Uh, for about six hours on this uh, SG guitar body. As I said before, it's a combination product. It's a mix of tongue oil and uh, beeswax. The tongue oil obviously sinks into the timber and the wax sits on top and offers a protective surface that we can buff out. So um, what I normally recommend to do is just take a, um, take a clean rag. And we're gonna be pressing fairly hard and also working in a circular motion. So um, def definitely check your rag, make sure there's nothing in there that could um, be abrasive to the, to the finish. And um, really from there, all, we, all we're really doing is picking a section and just just same as we'd polish a car. And so it really comes down to how long you spend, but you can already see that starting to shine up there. And that's pretty much the, um, the goal of what we're trying to do. So, okay, so the first piece of hardware we're going to install would be our tuners. So we've already got this one on. We need to firstly separate the tuners between left and right. And then the tuners essentially go on the washer over the top and the bushing secures the washer in place. So just thread those up from behind. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is align those tuners. So I usually just do this with a steel rule, just align them relative to each other. Next you just want to go through, put an indent just to mark where the pilot holes need to go. Being careful obviously not to bump the tuners or change their change their angle.
So when we're drilling pilot holes, we need to drill pilot holes in the bodies of these guitars because the screws are very fragile and small. So this is a soft, soft wood or a softer, softer hardwood being mahogany, but um, so it's not as dense as alder or maple or something like that, but um, it's still a good idea. These screws will strip pretty easily. So, and we need to keep an eye on our depth, especially when we're drilling on headstocks. So one good way to do that is to mark your drill bit with a piece of tape. So if we mark our drill bit at two thirds depth of the screw, we've got a, a depth indicator we can rely on to know we won't go through the headstock or go too deep. Just make sure you drill those holes nice and straight so the screws go in nice and straight. Okay, so one of the next things we need to do is install our strap buttons. So these are fairly important because our guitar is going to rely on them obviously when we're playing with a strap and also it's important we get the location right because that will also affect the balance of the guitar when we're, when we're playing with the strap. So these are pretty simple, the buttons like so, the screw goes through the button and there's this, this little rubber footing that protects the finish. Now, location on an SG or um, a Les Paul for that matter as well, it's normally dead center on the lower bout. And there's a few few different places you can put it on an SG. I like to put it on the neck heel, so we'll turn the guitar over and do that next. And the best way I've found to find, um, to find center is just to use some of this low-tech painter's masking tape and roughly align it with the center of the... Uh, book match veneer top on this particular guitar. And if you don't have a book match veneer top with a center line, just um, just find center between your two bridge post holes and perhaps with a set square or something similar, get center by, by doing it that way. Now the bodies are normally 40 mil, so first I want to mark that, um, mark that center line. using the tape means we don't have to mark the body at all. And then, um, then just come down 20 mil. The bodies are, as I said, 40 mil. do next is just put an indent in the body on that spot. I've just got a precision uh, screwdriver to ground the top to a sharp, sharp end. You can just simply remove that, um, remove that tape. 
So from here, we're just going to drill our pilot holes as we did before, but this time our screws are a little bit larger than the, uh, than the holes for the tuners. So I'm just doing it the same way on the heel. I'm just using tape, use my set square to find center. I'm just going to mark that location for the pilot hole. So when it comes to installing your truss road cover, again, I just use some low tech um, painters masking tape, find center, draw a line. And from there, I just align my Align the uh, holes of the cover to the line, mark my holes. So I've already done that on this one. Obviously make sure you've got the right screws for this. Don't want to be using screws that are too long. They go right through your headstock. Okay, so next we're going to install our controls. So a tone and volume, pods, a pickup selector, and our input jack. Now we're doing this a little early in the process just so we can get our ground wire in place against the bushing for the bridge that have set our, our signal. So I'll just protect the finish. Okay, so first thing to go in place will be our input jack. I'll explain, explain more about the electronics a little later when we're connecting our pickup wires. But the input jack goes at the back here. And generally on an SG, our tone goes to the back and our volume pots to the front. I just want to check I've got the right, right ones here. The neck will generally be the uh, set with the earth wire coming off, so this will be our neck. So let's put the tone at the back, volume at the front. And that makes sense because our, our whole the electronics cavity is nearest to that, that volume pot. So you can tell the difference between your volume and tone pots by the, <coughs> the tone pots have these green capacitors on them. And lastly, we've got our pickup selector. So just take the, take the nut off and the washer. Just poke that. So this is our ground wire. We're just poking it through the side into the pickup cavity for now. Okay, so next we want to get this ground wire through. Now you may have a hole pre-drilled. I'll just bring the camera down. You may have a hole pre-drilled in your side, like I have here, or you may not. If you don't, you're going to need to drill it, drill it yourself. And what you're trying to do, if you can see the wire, 
in the bottom of that hole now. You're just drilling a hole between the bridge pickup cavity and the bridge post. Yeah, so we just want that, that green wire up on the side so it'll sit against the bushing for the bridge when we put it in place. So next we'll install our bridge. This is a tunematic, tunematic bridge which means we have stud mounted bridge and tailpiece. So our bushings go in like so depending on how much finish or how clogged these holes are on your guitar you may or may not be able to push them in otherwise you may need to hit them with a the hammer but um, obviously have a piece of timber in between or take, take steps to preserve the finish I'm just trying to keep that wire against the side so hopefully you can see that's just sticking its head up there so we know we've got that ground against the ground against the uh, bushing. And that's just going to need a little bit of extra encouragement. So I'm just going to support the neck a little more. Just using a block of timber in between. And the bushings for the tailpiece. see the bridge pick up you can tell the difference between the two the profile of the pickup ring will be larger on the bridge pickup also make sure that the magnet the individual pole pieces are facing outward from each other so that really just means that the higher edge faces back You see, I've just marked, just with a small piece of green tape, just to know which one's the neck and which one's the bridge. And so what I'm gonna do first is just put the strings on the guitar and align their pickups to the, to the individual pole pieces. It's not essential they're spot on, but it will help us align align those pickups correctly. Okay, so once the strings are in place, we'll just be aligning. So square the pickup, the neck pickup off off the fretboard, and just align so that you're fairly even when it comes to the two outside magnetic pole pieces. 
once you're happy with location, just go ahead and mark some pilot holes again. Loosen up the strings just enough to pull that pick up back out. Being careful not to scratch the surface with your height adjustment screws. So just when installing these pickups, as you can see, we've got our location of our pilot holes marked. Now you'll find in the packaging, I'll just bring the camera across there. You'll see we've got a series of smaller, smaller screws here for the plastic cover and the scratch plate. There should be eight longer screws. They're the ones we'll be needing for our pickups. Now, because they're longer, the threaded section is all that's embedded in the timber, so we just want to get our pilot holes to two third depth of that screw, of the threaded part of the screw. And just go ahead and drill your pilot holes. Okay, so now it's probably a good time also to fit our pick guard. So they're normally a fairly tight fit between these two pickups. Let's put that in place like so. And again, we're just gonna mark our pilot holes. Probably get that protective cover off that pickup now, off that um, pick guard too. So rather than scratch it, just use a bit of tape. Should pull it straight up. Now, when you're soldering, you're going to need a couple of things. You're going to need a soldering iron, obviously, solder, and I'd also recommend just having a damp sponge nearby just to keep the tip of your soldering iron clean. The other thing we need to do is also tin tin the end of our soldering iron and tin the components we're wiring to. So all that means is essentially we just want a coating of solder on the tip like so. And we'll do that for our wires as well and our lugs. The first thing I want to do though is protect, protect the finish of the guitar. As I said, the volume pots are the ones at the front. This one's our neck, and we'll work with that one first. So I just use a little template here, but you don't need anything like this. What you're really just trying to do is make sure that you've got a stable base for the components while you're soldering. Now, as I said, I'm just gonna quickly tin the tips of these wires. That's just using some of the solder that's already on the iron. In many cases, the wires will actually come tinned from the factory as well. Now I'm just gonna thread. So we really need to connect that hot wire to the input. 
So I'll also just tin, tin the end of that lug. So I'm just applying a small amount of heat to the lug first, and just dripping a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of solder onto that, and that'll just help, help the uh, the wire, or help our connection. Then you want to thread it through the lug like so, through the eyelet. just apply some heat to that lug just for a few seconds once there's enough heat start feeding some solder into that and lastly we need to just connect this earth wire to the back of the pot we ground all the components in our wiring individually. So the lug must be connected to the back of the shield and that's then connected as part of a ground circuit, which eventually is connected to the bridge. Now the strings pass directly across the bridge, which means we've got a return, return path to the amp. that hot now just going to drop some solder So that's a bridge volume in place. The next thing I want to do is connect our neck pick up to our neck volume. And thread that, thread that hot wire through. In this case, we might not be able to. So I'm just going to again just keep the tip of that that iron tin, trying to hold that in place with the iron if I can. I really just needs a, a coating like like so. Okay, so the last connection we need to make is to our neck volume. Now I've already put some solder on the back of that. I'm going to then just connect that, uh, that ground. So just remember the uncoated wire goes directly to the back of the pot. Now it wouldn't really matter which, which pot I'm just putting it to the neck because that's the one that's closest. Now, the, the hot wire from the neck pickup should go to the output lug of this volume. As you can see, we've already got a bunch of wires coming from our pickup selector to our input just here. So we can connect this one to the output. Okay, so I'm just going to heat up that lug again. Okay, 
and that's our neck volume. So once that's done, obviously we just want to tighten those. Okay, so we'll just quickly test, test the pickups. And the first thing I want to hear is there's no interference. So I'm just going to check the neck pickup first. The way to do that, just tap on the, you can actually just tap on those individual pole pieces and we can hear that's working. Bridge. Now middle position should be a combination of both. Just check that volume's working as well. Okay, that's rolling off. Bridge. And these just push straight onto the pots. And of course, the last thing we'll put the uh, electronics cavity cover in place as well. Okay, so now we've got our harbour installed and our electronics all connected up. The last thing we need to do is just a basic final setup. So I'm going to go through the, a basic final setup here. You'll probably want to come back to this and make more adjustments after you've become more accustomed to the guitar, more accustomed to the neck. But um, for now, we're going to cover neck relief, action, which is the height of the strings from the fretboard, intonation, and lastly, we'll have a quick look at our pickup height. Now, First thing you want to do is make sure the guitar is tuned to concert pitch. You want to always make sure this is the case whenever you're doing a setup and you're going to want to come back and check, check the tuning throughout. Okay, so the first thing you want to check is neck relief. Now you don't want a dead flat neck. If you have a dead flat neck, it's, you're going to run into an increased chance of fret bars which is, is essentially the strings vibrating against the, the frets. So a couple of ways to check this. If you've got a steel rule, you can just run that between the D and G strings. Just get down to eye level and check, check for clearance toward the middle of the fretboard. But, and you can use feeler gauges and things like that to get exact measurements there. The number's fairly arbitrary, it really does depend on your own preferences. One thing that is a little more intuitive is if you fret the lower E at the first fret, the last fret, and then tap down on the 12th fret, if that string can actually move, as in there's a, it's not lying flat across the strings, um, you've probably got the appropriate amount of le neck relief. If it's laying flat, you're going to want to introduce more neck relief. If it's too high, you're going to want to take some of that relief away. Now the way to adjust your neck relief, just remove the base plate off the truss rod cover, Take your Allen key that should be part of your packaging. It will be in the same bag as your cable. As I said, I'm going to introduce more, more relief to this neck. So I'm going to want to turn this counterclockwise. And what that does is loosen the truss rod, which then allows the tension of the strings to take up and introduce more relief to the neck. So when you're doing this, I wouldn't turn more than about an eighth of a turn each time and check. You'll also want to keep an eye on your tuning while you're doing this. OK, 
Okay, that's good. But that's what you do if you need to keep adjusting, just turn the Allen key. As I said, turn it counterclockwise if you need to introduce more relief, turn it clockwise if you need to take some of that relief out. Okay, so the next thing we'll have a look at is our action, which is the height of the strings from the fretboard. Now this affects playability. Obviously a high action, it's harder to press down on the frets. A very low action introduces the possibility of fret buzz. And this is subjective as well. I tend to like as low an action as I can get away with. Now, every guitar is always going to have some fret buzz. It's, it's more a case of just limiting the amount. Um, so as I said, I like to go fairly low. But if you're not sure, a good starting point is to measure at the 12th fret and you're looking for about 2.4 mil clearance from the top of the fret to the underside of the string. And on the high E side, just to, take, just, just to account for the mass of the string, we're looking at about 1.6 mil. So as I said, you just run, run a steel rule or a string action ruler like this one. You just sit that on the 12th fret and we're measuring to the underside of the string. So this is just a touch high. So I'm going to need to just lower that a little. And we're pretty close on the high E side. As I said, this is subjective, but if you're not sure, this will make a good starting point. So what I'm going to need to do is just tighten the bridge post here. That will recess it further into the hole and that will just lower the action a little. And that's about right. So we got lucky there, it was only one adjustment. Normally it take a little bit longer than that. But that's how you do it, just adjust the height. Also keep an eye on your tuning obviously as well. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna look at is intonation. Now intonation is essentially checking if the guitar's in tune with itself. And um, it's really just compensating for the additional mass of the string. So if we look at the, the bridge here, you can see it's on a slant. Just about all electric guitars will have a slanted bridge like this and that's just to compensate for the additional mass of the bass strings. So if I fret and open, open E here. I'll just bring the camera around so you can see the tuner. So I fret and open E. Get that in tune. If I hit with the same attack at the 12th fret, you can see we're just a little sharp. Not much, just a little. So the way to adjust for that, if your intonation is a little sharp, what we're gonna do is move these individual saddles. So this is a little sharp. I'm gonna to wanna to turn this counterclockwise and move the saddle back further. If it was, if it was flat, I'd wanna reduce the scale length of that string or the vibrating length of that string and bring it forward. And you do that just using a small screwdriver. Intonation adjustment screws are at the at the front of the bridge. And I would turn that clockwise, like I said, or to bring it forward or counterclockwise to sit it further back. Sitting it further back will compensate for, for a sharper, sharper 12th fret note. So as you can see, if I bring the camera back around now, you can see I've overcorrected. So I just need to bring that saddle a little more forward. But that's essentially how you adjust the intonation. Okay, so the last thing I wanna do is just check pickup height. Now pickup height's fairly simple, and again, it's subjective. It will come down to how the guitar sounds to you. But essentially, the way to adjust it is to change these mounting screws at the side here. Now, a good place to start is about 2.4 mil on the bass side and about two mil on the, on the treble side, but we're holding down the last fret, and we're measuring from the underside of the string to the top of the individual pole pieces. Okay, 
that, so we're a little high there. I'm just gonna drop the height of those, that neck pick up. So counterclockwise to reduce the height. As I said, make sure you're holding down that last fret and measure from the top of the individual pole piece to the underside of the string. It's still a little high there, so I'm just going to reduce that pickup height again. That's pretty much spot on. Now again, after you play the guitar, you may want to make some changes there. It really will depend on what you're hearing. Okay, so that's pretty much how we do a basic setup. From here, we'll test the guitar. Now, unfortunately, I'm left-handed, so it's gonna be a little hard for me to do a full demonstration of this guitar, but we're still gonna run through the different pickup positions and just make sure everything's working correctly. Okay, so I'm gonna start in bridge position. Position, which is a combination of the neck and bridge pickup, obviously. Bones working there. And lastly, neck position. Everything's working there. So the next thing I would do is hook the guitar into middle position, turn both, both volumes up to 10, and then take your hands away from the guitar. And you should hear no electrical interference or hum. If you do, it's probably an issue with your ground circuit. And if that is the case, I would just open up the electronics cavity again and just have a look at your ground circuit. Chances are one of the black wires that we soldered earlier has gotten loose or you have a loose connection somewhere. Okay, now the last thing I would do is just check the neck itself. And what I would suggest is just running up and down the neck on each string. All the way and what you're listening for there are any signs of fret buzz or any dead notes. And if you do come across any problems like that, pop, pop the guitar up on the bench again and just have a look at your neck relief and your action. Okay, well, I hope you've enjoyed building your SG guitar kit as much as I have. Thanks for watching.